<laughs> if you ever find Dargaea's nectar, you'll probably be one of those who have been looking for it all of their lives, and thus won't need any instructions on what to do with it. Just the same. It's pretty simple, at least to start with. Make sure your affairs are in order in case you have a bad reaction, and then, well, bottoms up. The coming months are the least pleasant part. You'll find yourself unable to keep food down long before you're far enough along to stop needing it. Same with sleep. The color of your blood will be off, and your veins will consequently stand out more. Expect a few ingrown body parts. Little things, just fingers and ears and teeth, usually pressed up against the skin. Make sure you're caught up on your booster shots, because you are never going in for a checkup again or wearing anything more revealing than a trench coat in public, most likely. Eventually, a little cut on your belly will start... What's the word? Unhealing, let's call it that. Becoming a pus-filled wound in a few days. Over the coming week, three things will emerge from this. The first object resembles a greasy black beech nut, with maybe a tooth or two growing from it. When you're dead, someone will eventually find it and use it to make a new batch of Dargaea's nectar. Hide it well. Make things fun for future generations. The second object, basically, Looks like a softball-sized cluster of veins, many of them broken and leaking oily black stuff, all wrapped around... something. Then it'll squirm and you'll notice the twisted little skinless fetus in the middle. It will only survive for about 20 seconds. Burn the remains. The third object will be a, uh... Um... Well, let's just call it Object 3. It's easier that way. You can plant it anywhere you want. I advise some place you won't mind spending all of your time, and no one else would go. Your backyard or under your cellar works if you don't have any roommates. As long as there's fertile soil, dig at least five feet down. It won't want to be buried, but just keep piling dirt onto it. If you can still hear it when you're finished, you haven't gone deep enough. Its veins, or roots, I guess, will eventually spread in all directions about a foot and a half for every year of your life. Grass and weeds will grow stiff and bony, or black and oily or take on the color and texture of a spider bite, or rice paper. Wood will be infected too. You'll hear the arteries in your walls pulsing on quiet nights. The ground will rot with dead insect and animal life. Oh, and um, don't mow your lawn. It bleeds like hell. This place is your sanctuary. No matter what threats or injuries beset you outside, here you will be safe and healthy. <laughs> well, what passes for healthy for you now? And if you really hate someone, bring them here. Trick them into coming. They'll get infected one way or another. A lung full of spore, a thorn prick, a bit of residue on their hand. They will vomit blood and the blood will have tiny centipedes in it. 
they'll shit out their own spinal fluids. Their eyes will milk over and hatch. Little spines and brambles will grow from the sockets. They'll survive for months or years and doctors will be baffled. It'll be completely fucking great. <clears throat> that's, that's all for starters. You'll learn more as you go. Much more. But if I told you everything now, you might not do it. Whatever you do, just guard it with your life. Your very soul. If you think you're in danger of losing it, dig it up, kill it with a silver needle, let someone else make a new one someday. You'll feel as if you've pierced your own heart, but it's better than letting it fall into the wrong hands. Because you're a holder now. And you had better not let them come together. <laughs>